It's been a while since we did not talk about uh, Blender Beam, and uh, Dian uh, has been very busy lately. So today I wanted to talk to him a little bit about the new features that he and uh, the other contributors worked on in the latest uh, release. Hello, Dian. How are you doing, man? Hello, Petro. Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, you, busy. you're keeping very, very busy. You there. Can you please try to fill me in a little bit? It's been a few months since we we talked last time. When was the last time we talked? I don't remember. I think it was somewhere in March. But yeah, that that's uh, like you had more updates. Definitely you had some important ones, but should we maybe focus on this release now? Yeah, we can fast forward to this release or... I'm just trying to think because the last one we talked about was... You're right. Ages ago. <laughs> yeah. If there are any very important features that you think have been included in other uh, releases, we can go through that as well. Well, the one previous to this release was very important, which I'm showing over here. So this was about a month and a, well, two months ago now, almost two months ago. And um, this one was a huge one because we started doing a, a lot of work that was uh, to do with the Google Summer Code and the proposal we put for the Epic Mega Grants. What are these, before you go further, what are these for, for uh, somebody who doesn't know what these are? Well, the Epic Mega Grants basically says Epic Games will provide some money and support for us to deliver something that uh, we proposed to them. So we proposed that we would deliver three things. We would deliver um, greater geometric stability uh, in the form of uh, a series of automated uh, test systems. So this is this is not something that users will see. This is this is for uh, developers, but it's incredibly important. And what it is is that a lot of uh, open BIM is to do with generating and managing geometry, and there are all this code that uh, calculates geometry, and it's pretty difficult to calculate that geometry sometimes. And everything else that you do on top relies on that initial geometry calculation to be correct. And as time goes on, uh, as things change and geometry calculation gets more and more complex, it's important to make sure that everything still works the way it should. And IFC Open Shell is the engine which powers all this geometry calculation. And one of our proposals was to um, build this big automated system, which will guarantee the quality of geometry generation so that people can trust it. They know that when they're using anything which is based off IFC Open Shell, and one of that is the Blender BIM add-on, but it's also other things that you that you see. So for example, uh, FreeCAD will also benefit from much improved geometry, uh, geometry stability, or uh, ZeoKit is another example of something that you might use, or maybe you're, you're not using ZeoKit, you might use open project as your CDE, or you might use uh, Treatify, or you might use uh, Augin. So all, all of these solutions in the industry, uh, whether you know it or not, they're actually powered by this this one free software, which does all the geometry calculation. And so it's very important to get that correct so that this ecosystem can be built. The fundamentals are there. So that was one of three, three things we proposed. Um, unfortunately, the first one is a bit developer uh, oriented, but it, but it is uh, pretty important. The second one was to add drawing support. So uh, drawing generation is very, very tricky. And we thought it'd be a good idea to propose dedicated time and resources to develop the systems that could generate drawings from any IFC, not, not just within Blender BIM, but for any system, anybody who wants to use it. Wow. That sounds very interesting. Yeah. So later on, if you're developing a CDE uh, or your own script or your uh, or anything you want to automate, or or even or within FreeCAD or or an AR or VR, you you have access to this um, this 2D extraction engine essentially. And uh, Blender BIM will, I, I believe, will be one of the first graphical interfaces to let you use it to create drawings, but. Um, Underneath the hood, it is this uh, essentially a 2D extraction engine that anybody uh, can use. And, and that's something that just 
I mean, a lot of people do have similar things, but I think um, this will be definitely a first in the free software space and a first in the industry on pushing semantic 2D extraction. What I mean by that is that the, the 2D is intelligent. It's linked back. When you say uh, drawings, you don't say like detailing drawings. There will be like some uh, cross sections through some objects and you will see exactly what you see through that section. Correct, correct, correct. And when you say smart, smart drawings, they, they will be connected to the model. How exactly? Yeah, so when you, well, in traditional drawings, once you extract it, you're left with, well, I guess like rectangles and polygons. And you lose the fact that that rectangle is actually part of an original BIM object. And right now we have the systems that people are developing uh, which kind of overlay 2D, 2D and 3D together, which is great because it, it reinforces that understanding of how these drawings actually work. Um, but this takes it a step further. And you actually, when you, when you click on any ob or any polygon on your 2D drawing, you can bring it directly to that 3D object. It, it's not just a hatch pattern. It knows it's a particular type of material. And that means that your 2D drawings can be styled in any way or, or have labels generated on the fly on the client side. You don't need somebody to, to create a drawing and then you view it. It can be generated dynamically as you're viewing it. And, and you mentioned before, is it just cuts? But no, it's not just cuts. It can also be detail drawings because IFC supports these detail drawings. It supports uh, just annotations. It supports even things like shadows or a light direction for uh, shadow studies, solar studies, and all of that can it isn't just hatchings or, or you know, colored in fills on a on a on a sheet. It's actually intelligent in your drawing. So you can imagine in a shadow diagram, you knew exactly that angle. You could refer it back to the model. Um, you could you could change the time even. It, it it's really fascinating. Wow. Yeah, that sounds indeed very very nice. Anyway, it's, we're just starting, making the baby steps, um, but um, we'll get there. We'll get there, I believe. Yeah, I have no doubt. And the third thing you were talking about? So I, I guess the, the third thing we proposed was to develop all of the features required to support the entirety of the IFC specification. I, I guess the best way to explain this is that most of our BIM programs only interact with a very small aspect of IFC. For example, if we use uh, an architectural program, we are only importing, exporting architectural data in IFC. We don't have any engineering data in there. Uh, similarly, for an engineering program, we're only doing engineering data. We're not including cost data. If we're doing cost program, we're only doing cost data. We're not doing program scheduling data. So IFC supports all of these and more, including things like facility management or lighting simulation or structural analysis or energy modeling. And there's no tool out, out there in the industry that supports the 100% of the IFC specification. And this is a bit of a shame, really, because if, if our industry really wants to work together, we have to start, at the very least, not losing that data. And there needs to be a way to inspect the interdependencies across disciplines. Um, otherwise, it's very hard to, to make sure that we're going to collaborate digitally together. If there's no tool out there that can you know, verify that these relationships are, cor are correct across disciplines. So um, if you remember earlier in the year, we rebuilt the Blender BIM add-on from scratch to use native IFC, which is the first, uh, you know, uh, I guess, in the industry of this scale of, of uh, initiative. And what that allows us to do is actually confidently say, yes, we can and we will and we are going to uh, support 100% of the IFC schema. And uh, instead of the, the, the small fraction, which is currently supported by most, um, most uh, BIM software. So that means that we'll see new features for costing and scheduling and facility management and uh, energy analysis, MEP systems, all of that will start coming into uh, the Blender BIM add-on. That's amazing. Huge props to you for this. And everyone involved in helping, contributing, of course. Yes, and, and I think that's something that I just want to stress because um, it's almost uh, the second birthday of the Blender BIM add-on. And it, it's almost incredible to imagine that just two years ago, the Blender BIM add-on did not exist. ISC OpenShell had half the contributors that it had today. It's doubled in that time. 
the question of how do I view my IFC with with free software, like or even outside Windows, was was a big challenge. Um, we, there was no straight answer that could be given about it. Uh, whereas now it's so easy. IFC for support, that's something you had to specially compile for uh, in general. It was, it was something that now we take for granted. We don't kind of realize just how much has improved. Uh, now there is a, um, a tool for, uh, you know, visualizing and seeing all this data, interacting with it, whether it's a huge, there's a high level API being built that programmers can write IFCs in 15 lines of code rather than hundreds of lines of code and, and be, you know, trying to understand the spec. There's been lots of presentations given. And the only reason this is possible is because there's been so many uh, people contributing and new people joining, uh, whether they're giving presentations or writing documentation or testing, you know, finding bugs or, or doing what you're doing. It's um, it's incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh... The interest has grown and uh, I am really looking forward to see more and more people getting involved. Uh, let me ask you something specifically about IFC now. Is Building Smart, have they went full mode on IFC? Uh, if I remember correctly, there was a time when uh, they tried to find better formats or I don't know, uh, better ways of applying this. Do you have any idea about that or they are... 100% on IFC right now, and this is the only way they are going further. I'm not sure if I fully understood that question. Is the IFC a standard that they are, they are trying to go on full uh, on the full mode, or they are experimenting with other alternatives? As far as I'm concerned, for the purposes of building information, IFC is the only specification that I'm aware of from building smart that they are pushing. There are other specifications that are not created by building smart that we may investigate, like um, a great one is by Bureau Happel, the uh, bomb model, bomb model, model model. There's also things like brick schema, which have more specific use cases like for MEP systems or uh, Google has their own, Microsoft has their own. So it's not the only one out there, but as far as Building Smart is concerned, IFC is the only specification for that purpose. Building Smart is pushing other specifications as well, but for different purposes that complement IFC. For example, BCF is another one. IDS is another one. So the vendors don't have the excuse that they won't invest in uh, developing their software uh, to work better with IFC because uh, they are afraid or scared that uh, Building Smart will push another uh, format later on or something. So they this excuse doesn't stand for, for uh, in this case. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, and, and I'm not aware of anybody saying that. And I think now, I mean, the biggest part of standards development is not the technical aspect. It's the um, just the social aspect, getting people to agree. You know, let's, let's just agree on something. It may not be the best, but let's agree on something. And over time, it will get better and better fingers crossed. And I think if you kind of rewind, I don't know, 10 years ago, <laughs> I mean, IFC was around 10 years ago, but it, it wasn't around like it is today. Today, you you can't, almost every single software it supports IFC or integrates with IFC to some degree, you know, might not be great, but it, but it exists. And I don't think anyone could have quite predicted that when it first began uh, decades ago. You mean the, it, it's optimistic? Or uh, it developed uh, better than expected or worse? Well, uh, back when this was starting, um, I don't think anyone could have quite predicted which which one was going to become the standard from a social perspective, uh, because that, that's, the more, that's the most important thing from a social perspective. What are we agreeing on? Uh, but nowadays, I think the answer is quite clear and, and obvious to any new tech startup in uh, the AC ecosystem. You can't move very far without looking at IFC. It's, it's everywhere. <laughs> you can't avoid it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 